Okay, friends. Now let's talk about the regulation of enzymes activity. And we'll be seeing the different types and different ways that enzymes are regulated. And uh, we'll be seeing the regulation of enzymes uh, during the production of that protein in the gene level, genetic level regulation, as well as after the production of the proteins, uh, what are the ways uh, that uh, enzymes can be regulated. So let's look at the control points of the regulation. And if we begin with the control points of the gene regulation, we start with uh, the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotic cell. And if you look at them, the prokaryotic cell has much basic level of gene expression while the DNA is placed in the cytosol, which is transcribed to mRNA, then the mRNA will be translated into the proteins. While in eukaryotes, the DNA is present inside the nucleus. So first, the transcription of the DNA takes place inside the nucleus, where there's several round of RNA editing and modification takes place inside the nucleus. Splicing takes place inside the nucleus. And then they make the mature mRNA that is transported into the cytoplasm and then those mRNA is being translated into the proteins. Now the range of regulation is different stages. For prokaryotes, the steps of regulation in the gene expression here is less because there are less steps involved in that process. While in eukaryotes, as there are multiple steps involved, the range of regulation is also higher and much tightly regulated. The regulation is in the form of transcriptional, post-transcriptional, RNA processing, RNA transport and degradation. These three are about the post-transcriptional regulation, pre-transcriptional regulation, post-transcriptional regulation and then narrator activity regulation and proteolysis that will be going on in the eukaryotes. While in prokaryotes, it has transcriptional regulation, translational regulation. The post-transcriptional regulation is not much because the modification does not require here. Now, the latter part that is the activity regulation and proteolysis of the target enzymes are the things that we are going to talk about separately. These are known as post-translational regulation or post-translational control. Why? Because this process involved after the translation. Let's look at the regulation of enzyme activity in the post-translational regulation pathway. There are different ways. Inhibitors can regulate the activity of the enzymes. Proteolysis can regulate the activity. Phosphorylation can sometimes render an enzyme inactive or active. Signal transduction can be a big event. Uh, to regulate the protein's function and feedback regulation is also another mode of inhibiting or influencing uh, the activity of an enzyme. Now first if we look at inhibitors, we know there are three types of enzyme inhibitions that are possible, competitive inhibition, non-competitive inhibition and uncompetitive inhibition. In this case, either substrate at inhibitor competes for the active site of the enzyme or if the enzyme is an allosteric one which has different, uh, different sites for interaction, in this case we are looking at two different sites, uh, upon binding of the substrate inhibitor can also bind to the inhibitor binding site and prevent the enzyme to convert the substrate into the product. Now in this case we are looking at the inhibition only. Now inhibitor can bind and compete for the active site or it can bind to the distant site. Second one or proteolysis is simply prevent the enzyme to, to be active anymore because proteolysis will destroy the enzyme into smaller fragments of amino acids. So it will not allow the enzyme to be activated. Now the phosphorylation, sometimes phosphorylation once it's attached to the enzyme, it makes an enzyme activated. Sometimes when it's attached to the active enzyme, it makes it inactive depends on the different types of sub enzymes. Signal transduction, enzymes sometimes interact with regulatory subunit. While the regulatory subunit requires the presence of a specific receptors that binding to the regulatory subunit influences 
the activity and the activeness of the enzymes associated with the regulatory subunit. For example, the same enzyme which was inactive here, once the specific molecules, let's say cyclic AMP or calmodulin attaches to the, uh, to the regulatory subunit, that can allow that enzyme to be activated and the enzyme can diffuse and start its job inside the cell. Last one, the feedback inhibition. It deals with again two different sites at least in the enzyme where one is the active site, another one is the allosteric regulation site where there is a presence of a second regulatory molecule. Binding of this regulatory molecule to the allosteric site can prevent uh, the enzyme to have an activated form. So this in a sense are different rounds of regulations of enzyme activity that we see. Now this enzyme regulation is kind of a amplified cascade. If we go with the first one, this is the start point of the enzyme. One enzyme can affect multiple substrates and they further provides multiple substrate conversion. So this is a chain, this is a cascade and this signal is also amplified in several fold. So if you look at here, we start with the number of substrates and then we got the number of products because the enzyme is involved with the process. One substrate is converted to the multiple products. So each of those products can be again taken. Then again, those will be acting as a substrate. Some other enzymes convert them into the product. So one enzyme convert a number of substrate into multiple number of products. Remember that. That's why it's a amplification process that we know. So if you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that because your subscription keeps me going to, to create so many videos for you. Thank you.